Good morning, folks. We've got weather, the past, the galaxy, and the sun. Bright active region on the north, plasma filaments visible around the limbs. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours showing the low latitude coronal hole crossing the center line, still awaiting its intensified solar wind stream. The bright active region is the same sunspots below the arching fields that we saw yesterday. No decay, but no real development. We would need to see considerably higher interaction among surface spots before any major flaring occurred. Coming to the solar wind, mostly stabilized and slightly calming conditions, still awaiting that coronal hole stream and as we wait, geomagnetism settles back into calm range. Quick note about the recent western United States earthquakes. Taking the fault lines at the far west coast out of the equation, we find the 6.5 in Idaho was definitively the largest intraplate rumble in the entire region over the last 20 years. In fact, two of the top four events since the year 2000 have been in the last 15 days since Utah shook, you might remember, in March. Now, as we switch to listings by year instead of magnitude, I hope you can notice that we often get multiple upticks in the same year in this region but they haven't been quite as big as this one in a while. Off to Afghanistan. When Iran floods, you know surrounding regions can't be far behind. The photos of people lined up to receive something is rough, especially when you see how quickly and totally the floods came to receive all they had. South Dakota River floods are giving all they have and have been doing so for an insanely long time. The upper Midwest ground moisture and hydrology situation has them above normal by a good ways with the springtime upon us and the rainy bit of the year. In fact, April precipitation forecast is out in the U.S. and the upper Midwest is in that high forecast zone. No drought forecast this month, interestingly. But I forecast that this is no fun. Polar vortex peeling off right over western Canada, and as we come down through the atmosphere and layers to the jet stream, we find that that peeling of polar air meets various dips in the jet stream. Goodbye, early spring warmth, the cold returns. Fascinating story here on a 25,000 year old structure that was built using mammoth bones. Now here's the thing. The mammoth houses in the region are perplexing because this region was darn close to ice all the time during the last glaciation. According to the official paleoclimate timeline, we were still in the last ice age at this time, which brings up every question from their ruggedness to a different latitude for that location in millennia past. Either way, We've been building and organizing a very, very long time. Interesting bit here on a slow diffusion region just outside the solar system. Their spatial distribution and distance mapping mistakes notwithstanding, indeed we should be in a low if not nearly no diffusion region as chaos and random motion and diffusion are stifled in the presence of magnetic fields, galactic magnetic fields, part of the galactic current sheet, and quite obviously we have shifted on to our next paper. Faraday mapping of the fields and implied sheet to follow the undulation. Of course, this matters because whenever the sheet overcomes the solar magnetic fields, we're either going to get a super flare or a micronova. Here they are confirming numerous super flares at sun-like stars, and I do need to correct one thing. If you see where they're discussing the super flare range they did see, 10 to the 31 to 10 to the 36 ergs, described as X1 to X100,000. Well, the Carrington event at around X40 was 10 to the 32 ergs, and so X1 should be closer to the 10 to the 30 erg range. But in general, they are indeed seeing the major blasts, up to what I'd argue counts as an X1 million flare. By the way, the sun can't hit those highest levels, but X50 to X100 is nowhere near out of the question. It's happened before, and the layers of those isotopes on Earth say it's going to happen again. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.